everyone, it's Christine here from Beach House 34. And first off, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a listener. I am so grateful for you being here. As you might know, putting together a podcast, researching, writing, recording, and editing is very time consuming and creates a lot of expenses that I pay for out of my own pocket. If you enjoy the show, it would mean a great deal to me if you'd check out my Patreon site which lets you contribute and help keep the show going. A support starts at just $3 a month and it goes directly towards covering the expenses for the show itself and helps it grow even bigger. Plus, at the $3 level, you'll get a shout out in the next podcast. You'll get exclusive voting power over show ideas as well as access to my personal posts on Patreon. Any support is greatly appreciated. You'll find a link on Instagram at Beach House 34 Podcast within the bio, or alternatively, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Beach House 34. Thank you so much. Much love, Christine. Before we begin, I want to give you a word of caution. Uh, Please note that this episode contains depictions of violence and the mention of violence against children that some people may find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. In 2021, the remains of a young woman would be located in a remote location in Missouri. The remains of this woman indicated that she had not only been murdered, but her body had been handled in a repulsive way after her death. Welcome to the Beach House 34 True Crime Podcast. I'm your host, Christine Worth. In July of 2021, A young woman named Cassidy Rainwater went missing in Missouri. She actually wouldn't be reported missing until late August. And this is when a friend of Cassidy's finally called the Dallas County Sheriff's Office to report Cassidy was missing. She said that Cassidy was 33 and she hadn't been seen in six weeks. Cassidy had last been seen, according to this friend, with a man named James Rainwater, which you would at first think, hey, they're related. But later, it was determined that this man's actual name was not James Rainwater, but rather James Phelps. And Cassidy had been staying with him temporarily on Moon Valley Road in Lebanon, Missouri a very remote location in the middle of a heavily wooded area, 163 miles southeast of Kansas City. That same day, an officer was dispatched to this location to perform a welfare check on Cassidy, but he didn't locate her. The detective did, however, notice that the loft on the property looked as if it had been quote-unquote stripped, but no belongings of Cassidy's were found in the loft. A detective later questioned the owner of the home, James Phelps, and James said that Cassidy had been staying with him for a couple of weeks until she could get back on her feet. He then told the detective that Cassidy had also talked about going to Colorado And James further said about a month prior, Cassidy had left in the middle of the night, met a vehicle at the end of the driveway in the dark, and had not been seen or heard from since. In the meantime, Cassidy's disappearance had hit the news. And because of this, an anonymous source sent in a cyber tip to the FBI. This cyber tip appeared to show pictures of a woman who looked like Cassidy and she was partially nude in a cage. Other pictures showed the same woman 
bound to a gantry device. Now, personally, I had no idea what a gantry device was. And once I learned about it, it was horrifying. This device is something that is used to hang, skin, and dress wild game. It is a device that is supported on two sides with a post or a bar running between the two supports. And while this is probably a, a bad way to explain things, the first thing that came to my mind was something that looked like a frame of a swing set. But instead of innocent swings hanging from the middle, on a gantry device, you'll typically find some kind of pulley system in the center. And at the end of this pulley system is what looks like a very large and heavy duty hanger. This quote unquote hanger, for lack of a better term, is what is meant to hold the wild game while they are dressed. The woman in the photos was identified as Cassidy Rainwater. And not only did the photos show that Cassidy had been bound to this gantry frame, it also had photos showing Cassidy had been disemboweled and dismembered. Investigators then obtained a search warrant for James Phelps' cell phone. And after it was searched, they found seven photos of Cassidy partially nude and being held in a cage on his property. They also located messages between James Phelps and another man named Timothy Norton. The messages indicated that they were planning on murdering Cassidy on July 24th. The same day, James Phelps was arrested, and later, Timothy Norton was taken into custody. Over the next week, investigators searched and processed this crime scene. They located the gantry crane that was shown in the photos that were provided to them by the FBI. And this crane was located behind the residence. Inside the home was blood evidence that was later sent to the crime lab for testing. The blood was later determined to be consistent with Cassidy's DNA. To make matters worse, they also found a freezer located on the property, and inside this freezer, items that appeared to be human flesh with the date of 724 on the package. While others may hype this up as pointing to the men as cannibals, I believe that it was their trophy. And had they not been caught, there may have been other trophies added to this freezer as time went on especially when we learn a little later from one of the men that they were actively seeking out women. Next to James's property, skeletal remains were located, believed to be Cassidy. And when authorities attempted to interview James Phelps, he instead invoked his rights to an attorney and refused to answer any questions. Next, Timothy Norton, the second man involved in this, was interviewed, and he said that he was an over-the-road trucker and even lived in the truck when he wasn't actively working. So he wasn't involved in this at all. And obviously, authorities later determined that Norton had given them false information. So a few days later, the FBI stepped in and they interviewed Norton since obviously Norton was willing to talk. He hadn't invoked his rights, you know, unlike James Phelps. Norton ended up confessing that he and Phelps would search for potential victims online and at a nearby Walmart. Norton also admitted knowing that Phelps was keeping Cassidy in a cage within the home and that on July 24th, Phelps asked Timothy to come to his house to help restrain Cassidy. He then told investigators that Phelps had asked him to go to the property while Cassidy was sleeping. He then made Cassidy, Phelps had made Cassidy sleep on the floor by the front door 
of the cabin. Now, this way, they had easy access to attack her. And according to Norton, he said that he held her legs down while Phelps then strangled Cassidy and placed a bag over her head. After she had stopped moving, he and Phelps took a quote-unquote short break before taking her body outside. It was then that Phelps bound her to the gantry crane and then began to disembowel and dismember Cassidy. When Phelps was finished, Norton helped him carry parts of Cassidy into the house where they then put her body into the tub in the bathroom. On October 2nd of 2021, James Phelps and Timothy Norton were both charged with first degree murder. They are also facing charges for the abandonment of a corpse. Two days later, the house where James Phelps stayed burned to the ground. At the scene, investigators found two incendiary devices made with mortar tubes, balloons, and coiled fuses with a trip wire attached. The fire, to no one's surprise, was classified as arson. It wasn't until November of 2021, during a court hearing, that Phelps, the original man who had invoked his right, he wanted an attorney, he wouldn't talk to anybody. It wasn't until November that he learned that Norton, the guy who had helped him, had actually confessed. So a few months later, in February of 2022, new court documents were filed in the case of Timothy Norton, the second man. Now, while Norton was the only one of the two men to talk about Cassidy, you might think he had some kind of moral compass, but the court documents filed indicated evidence of a sexual nature and violence involving children that was located when searching devices owned by Norton. Almost a full year later, in April of 2023, James Phelps entered an Alford plea and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Now, an Alford plea is when a defendant pleads guilty but doesn't actually admit to the crime. They just admit that there is enough evidence that they would be found guilty in a jury trial. This further means that since there would be no jury trial, Cassidy's family members would be denied a trial finding out more about what happened to their loved one. Timothy Norton just up and pled guilty, and he was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Now, during an interview with KY3 in Buffalo, Missouri, Tim Norton admits that he deserves to die. And he said that things just went, quote unquote, sideways. He said that he and Phelps thought Cassidy had stolen things from them and wanted them back. Quote, the next thing I know, he was choking her and things were going sideways. If you looked into his eyes, that would have been the last thing, you know, I wanted to do was cross him at that point in time. I know he's got a temper, unquote. In a really odd twist, Cassidy's mom actually went missing also in 2007, many years earlier. Her remains were found scattered in a field near Lebanon a year later, and no cause of death was ever released on her case, and no one has ever been arrested. But the Laclede County Coroner, coroner sorry, said in November of 2021 that it is still an open case, but doesn't believe that there's any connection between Cassidy's disappearance and her mother's death. Now, this information was from a news release in the area, and I found it odd that it wasn't the police department or any investigators who had said this, uh, but instead it was a county coroner. You know, maybe no one in an official capacity would agree to be interviewed for this case. And that will do it for this little mini-sode. Thank you all for listening. And don't forget, if you like this show and you find yourself coming back time and time again, consider supporting the show by becoming a Patreon for only $3 a month. 
where you'll get perks like a shout out in the next episode, exclusive rights to view my current posts, and more. Visit patreon.com forward slash beachhouse34 to sign up. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with the continuing bond hearing of Darlie Routier.